Hello dear students, welcome to Top Scholars. Today we will be discussing about balanced equation that is information limitation and ways to make a balanced equation more informative. Now the equation you can look over here is a balanced chemical equation. But what is a balanced chemical equation? Yes, a balanced chemical equation is a chemical equation wherein the number of atoms on the left hand side of the reaction is equal to the number of atoms on the right hand side of the equation. Which means that the number of atoms that are present on the reactant side is equal to the number of atoms that is present on the product side. Now, the most important information that is provided by a balanced chemical equation is that it actually gives you the result of a chemical change. That is, it tells you the reaction that is taking place. For example, in this reaction you can see that potassium hydroxide reacts with sulfuric acid resulting in the formation of potassium sulfate and water. So, from this you can clearly see that which are the reactants taking part and which are the products which are formed. Right? Now, in a chemical reaction we say that the substances which take part in a chemical reaction are called as reactants and the substances which are formed as a result of the chemical reaction are called as products. So, a balanced chemical equation gives you information about the reactants as well as the products which are formed. The chemical equation also gives us information about the number of molecules of each substance that take part in the reaction. For example, in the above reaction you can see that we have two molecules of potassium hydroxide reacting with one molecule of sulfuric acid which gives you one molecule of potassium sulfate and two molecules of water. The chemical equation that is the balanced chemical equation also gives you information about the chemical composition of the respective molecules. Now friends, this balanced chemical equation also helps you to calculate the molecular mass. For example, in this reaction let us calculate the molecular mass of each of the reactant and we also calculating the molecular mass of each of the products that is formed. Right? So, let us start with the molecular mass of potassium hydroxide. Before that tell me friends what is molecular mass? Yes, molecular mass is the sum of the atomic masses of the constituent elements that are present in a molecule. So, now potassium hydroxide is made up of potassium, oxygen and hydrogen right. So, let us see how do we calculate the molecular mass of potassium hydroxide ok. So, we have two molecules of potassium hydroxide right. So, it will be 2 multiplied by 40 stands for the atomic mass of potassium plus 16 stands for the atomic mass of oxygen plus 1 here 1 stands for the atomic mass of hydrogen. So, molecular mass of potassium hydroxide is simply the sum of the atomic masses of potassium, oxygen and hydrogen. Here we have multiplied it with 2 because we have 2 molecules of potassium hydroxide. So, when I calculate it, it comes out to be 114. Now, let us do it for sulfuric acid, right? Sulfuric acid is made up of 2 atoms of hydrogen, 1 atom of sulfur exactly and how many atoms of oxygen? Yes, 4 atoms of oxygen. So, let us quickly calculate the molecular mass, right? So, the atomic mass of hydrogen is 1, right? Since we have 2 atoms of hydrogen, it becomes 2, right? Plus atomic mass of sulfur, that is 32, plus atomic mass of oxygen. What is the atomic mass of oxygen? 16. Now, since here we have 4 atoms of oxygen, it will be 16 multiplied by 4, which comes out to be 64. Now, when we add the atomic masses of the constituent elements, we get the molecular mass as 98. Now, let us do it for potassium sulphate, right? Potassium sulphate is made up of potassium, sulphur and oxygen, right? Now, here we have 2 atoms of potassium, right? And the atomic mass of 1 potassium atom is 40, right? Now, since we have 2 atoms of potassium, it becomes 2 into 40, that is 80, right? Plus, atomic mass of sulphur, 32, very good. Plus, atomic mass of oxygen, 16, but here we have 4 atoms. So, it becomes 16 into 4, that is 64. Now, when you sum up the atomic masses, it comes out to be 176. Now, let us do it for water. Water is very, very simple, right? Okay. So, how many atoms of hydrogen do you have here? Yes, 4 atoms. And oxygen, 2 atoms, exactly. So, let us calculate the molecular mass now, right? Now, since here I have... 2 molecules of water, I am putting a 2 over here as you can see. So, 2 multiplied by the atomic mass of hydrogen. Atomic mass of hydrogen is 1, but we have 2 atoms of hydrogen. So, it will become 2 into 1 that is 2. 
plus atomic mass of oxygen yes 16 so now when you calculate this it comes out to be 36 so the molecular mass of water is 36 so here we saw that we can easily calculate the molecular masses of the reactants as well as the products form right from simply the chemical equation now just now we saw that what was the molecular mass of potassium hydroxide yes it was 114 and that of sulfuric acid was 98 right and what about the product side the molecular mass of potassium sulfate was how much yes 176 and that of water was 36 exactly now if you add up the mass of the reactant separately and the mass of product separately you will find that the mass of the reactant is equal to the mass of the product as you can see over here the mass of the reactant is 212 and the mass of the product is also 212 so the balanced chemical equation also helps us to prove the law of conservation of mass just now in the example we saw that 212 grams of reactant gave you 212 grams of products right which means that total mass of the reactant is equal to total mass of the products and hence it proves the law of conservation of mass which states that mass can neither be created nor be destroyed but it can be converted from one form to another now friends there are some limitations of a chemical equation right let's discuss it one by one a chemical equation does not represent the physical states of the reactants and the products that is from the chemical equation i cannot identify that whether the reactant is present in the solid state liquid state or gaseous state as well as the products form are in the liquid state solid state or in the gaseous state similarly the chemical equation does not indicate the time that is required for the completion of reaction that is by looking at the chemical equation i cannot say that what is the time required for the reaction to complete the chemical equation does not have any indication of the time the chemical equation also does not give you information about exchange of energy that takes place that is whether heat is absorbed in a reaction or heat is liberated in a reaction is not indicated it also does not give you information about the concentration of the reactant and the product it also does not give you information about the rate of a reaction by looking at the chemical equation you cannot predict anything about the rate of the reaction the chemical equation also does not indicate the completion of a reaction also it does not indicate whether the reaction is reversible or it is irreversible so so many limitations are there right so in order to overcome these limitations to learn more about this topic Download Top Scholars app.